so as promised, I did say that I was going to take you on a little bit of a tour around the ultrasonic machines, the lasers, and all of your additive manufacturing. Uh, now, this is Marcus Bomer, and you head up all of this area of technology. Now, why is additive manufacturing so important here? Hello, Lindsay. It, it gives you a very good alternative to conventional machining, and it uh, gives you the possibility to generate parts you actually cannot do on a conventional way. Very detailed components, for example. And what industries are we looking at? Very widespread industries, but actually, whenever we are talking about internal integrate features which conventionally cannot be machined. So let's say motorsports, uh, let's say tooling industry. And um, it really uh, is a, a very good alternative uh, when you're even talking about inconel or aluminum, so reactive materials. So for someone who's kind of new to this, do people worry about the materials? Are you restricted by the metals that you can use? Actually not, due to the fact that we do have a closed chamber. Also reactive materials can be manufactured, but stainless steel, for example, uh, is also possible even without heat treatment. The material uh, defines if a heat treatment is required afterwards or not. So do people then worry about the strength, or is that what you mean by heat treatment? You know, it can just strengthen it afterwards. Excellent, exactly. So heat treatment might be necessary, but this is really defined then by the material. For, as mentioned, for stainless steel, for example, no heat treatment is required. You do generate uh, material properties similar to, uh, to a conventional uh, machining process. So we're going to talk about some of your ultrasonic machines, but let's talk about this laser here, your LaserTech 30 SLM. What's unique about this machine? The unique thing about that machine is that we do have a powder cartridge, and this powder cartridge enables you to quickly change over from powder one to powder two. With only, uh, within only two hours, you completely change over your material from, let's say, aluminum to titanium without a cross-contamination within the machine. The second feature, the f second benefit is that we do have access while the machine is closed, when the job is finished, you do have access to the chamber, to the working chamber. You can suck out your material. Um, it is a closed uh, uh, loop. It will be, uh, it will be, um, re um, yeah, it will be uh, cleaned the material again, and then you can start after you have opened the door the new job. Now, some of these parts over here are extremely impressive. I don't know if you could come over and have a look, Marcus, because uh, this piece here, I mean, the detailing that happens here, this is extraordinary. Is this a patented product in the industry? Is that your ultrasonic machines that are the patented? Exactly, the ultrasonic is patented. Um, the, here, we do, we do own a couple of patents, um, but actually the powder bed machines are quite widespread. Our main features is the quick change over of the powder and um, the security for the operator actually due to the fact that the, clo the door stays closed when the job is finished, you suck out all the powder before you start a new process. So we'll go and see some of the ultrasonic machines, but first I think there's another laser that we're going to talk about. So we're outside of the LaserTech 65 3D, slightly larger machine to what we last saw. Talk me through this. Actually, this is right. Uh, this is a different process. The LaserTech 65 3D is a LMD machine, a laser material deposition. Um, we do not have the powder bed. We spray powder through a nozzle. We hit the powder with a laser beam. We melt it up and grow parts layer per layer. Actually, you can not only grow parts, you can also repair parts or you can coat parts. A very uh, nice process here is that we can even generate material gradients. So we can say we generate a mix out of two different materials. You can decide what material hardness you actually want to achieve. Let's say on a tool, um, um, a part for the tooling industry. The process here is um, uh, the process here we do uh, show is uh, a machine with only laser capability, but there's also a bigger system available of this system, uh, and uh, you also do get milling capability on that system, uh, which means you generate your part, and after that you can mill or even turn the component in one clamping, in one go. Is this a popular machine? Because I know it's going to be quite industry specific, but within the industry, is it a popular machine? 
the market needs to be right, of course. Um, this is very important. We are always talking about very precious uh, components. And uh, the main markets we are looking at this is uh, the tooling industry, is the oil and gas or energy generation or mechanical engineering in general. Right, let's talk ultrasonic. Now from the ultrasonic machines, what I recall is, is the tool is rotating and oscillating for harder materials. Is this correct? This is correct. Actually, we are rotating the tool with a speed up to 60,000 RPM. And in addition, we are moving the tool up and downwards. This is really beneficial for very hard and brittle materials like glass, like ceramics, like silicon carbide. Materials in general which cannot be properly uh, ground due to the fact that tool breakage would be generated or um, yeah, the, the, the component is too extreme in terms of aspect ratio, diameter to length ratio. And this is exactly the points where we are looking at with the ultrasonic technology. And is this a patented technology? This is a patented technology. The way of energy transmission is patented. And, uh, the benefit of this ultrasonic technology is that we not only can bring it to one machine, we can bring it to most of the milling machines of DMG uh, Mori. The customer decides how big his part is, what machining requirement he has, and we can bring the ultrasonic to that milling machine. And actually what you get is a two-in-one solution. You do still keep your standard milling capability on a machine tool, and in addition, you do get a grinding machine, a five-axis grinding machine. Wow, okay, so Marcus, anyone who's interested in this type of technology, get in touch with you, and you'll be there to help and answer, right? Definitely, thanks a lot, Lindsay. <laughs> Thank you.